Simon, if you were to Tell take me. over another club, yep. would God you help have... Us. God help us. <laughs> Thank you, Sam. <laughs> would you have this one, or Graham, uh, as a manager? Um, honestly? That's a really good no. question. No it's, a, no, it's a good one. It's a good question. And, and um, I met these two boys. These were f f two of the first managers I ever met when I first bought Palace. I met Sam smoking a fag, I think he was. Yeah, it was, yeah. In, yeah. The, in, the, um, yeah. In, the, uh, in the tunnel. That's right. On the way to and he was I very did, kind yeah. to me. And I met Graham in our first game were we ever. In the gym? Were we in the gym? No, oh, we were in the boardroom um, at Blackburn Rovers after you beat us 2-0 in my first ever game. <laughs> so I, I, have, I have respect and fond memories of these guys because they're quite courteous towards me. And, and, and it was, I was new. You that know. was fucking men. I know, it's, it's changed now. <laughs> um, and Graham sort of introduced it. You know, I think his opening line to me was, welcome to the madhouse. I said, it was a f***ing madhouse. I'll fit right in here. Now, the difficulty for me is employing Sam was I would find it difficult to employ someone that actually refers to themselves as Big Sam. Because I am. I, I would struggle with that, right? I would, I would have difficulty with that. Yeah. Now, on, on the Graham front, it's like a, um, uh, a dynamic of two uh, experiences. The experiences of my images of Graham before I started working with him on a broadcasting channel and the ones before. So having worked with him on a broadcasting channel, absolutely not. <laughs> Um, having worked with him and having uh, not worked with him, having had experience with him over the years and watched him as a player, watched him as a manager, watched him as a leader. Yes, I absolutely would. And I did want to. I interviewed him in 2006. Yeah. Um, what I say is an interview. We had a conversation at dinner in Marbella and talked about the particular concept of coming to manage Palace. And he let me down badly. And I ended up taking Peter Taylor. I've never forgiven him for it. Um, but yes, the answer is yes, because I happen to have, I don't sit in this camp, and I've spoken to Sam about this briefly before, about this idea that the media pigeonhole you based upon their lack of knowledge and understanding of what people actually do. People position Sam Allardyce as this archaic manager that plays a certain brand of football that doesn't have any outlook besides a brand of football that's not particularly easy on the eye. And I didn't subscribe to that view. I thought he was a good manager. Um, I felt that he produced teams that were successful with the resources that he had. I also understood, because I knew his chairman, Bill Gartside, um, God rest his soul, um, and Eddie Davis, the owner of Bolton, that there was a lot more to it. So I felt that the, the, the maligning of Sam um, was, was wrong. And I felt that he was a very, very good manager. I think he was the architect of his own downfall with the England situation, but that's a different discussion. And as far as Graham is concerned, Graham is a leader. And a leader as a person is a very strong character. And I think people's perception of me, and it's wrong, it's uneducated, like a lot of the media is, I'm not interested in doing their job. I might have an opinion every now and again because I own a football club, I should have. But I don't want to have a dog and bark. I don't pay these guys a lot of money to go down to the training ground or be in the dressing room working out what it is they're doing. I can see what they're doing on a Saturday afternoon. So both of these were self-starters. Both of these were leaders. Both of these would have made my life a much easier situation because they would have been producing a team which is reflective of what I wanted. It might not have always got the outcomes, but if you can see what they're doing and the reasons why you're doing it, then these are the kind of managers you want. People will say the game's moved on. Graham faces that argument sometimes because he makes it simple, and I think Generally he's right. comes from you. No, it doesn't. No, it doesn't. I always defend you. I when you're, you when you're out, me a dinosaur. Yeah, Occasion. well, for different reasons. Right? <laughs> a majestic beast is what I meant. Um, but I also think that, you know, people have views on things. You know, Graham, I was the first person to defend him when he made a fair observation on Sky when a man's game was being played by men with the sole, partici sole participants being men. He remarked upon it, it's back to being a man's game. And, of course, the world piled in on him. And I'd be the first person to say that wasn't appropriate for people to try and pigeonhole Graham in, a, in, in, in that particular way. But I think at the time, both of these guys, I would have taken, yeah. That's nice. Look at you three getting on. And saying, in saying that, when he said, if he said, if that's what he said, Simon, about letting you get on with your job, there's, God almighty, the amount of interference I've had with them boys upstairs yeah. drives you absolutely crazy, like you mean. So, you know, that, that, that alone employing you and saying, here, this is your position, mm. this is my job title, you can get on with that. I'll liaise with you. My, my success... But anywhere I've been has always been the communication between me, a chief executive, a, a sporting director, and or the actual owners. Without that, at any of the clubs that I've been successful at, whether it's just saving them or taking Bolton into Europe for the first time, has always been about them relationship with the owners or and or the people that run the club. Can I ask, would you go back? Uh, what, well, I say yes. Yes, probably. Nothing would tempt me back into management. I'm, really? Yeah, I'm too old now. Yeah, I, what you alluded to earlier, where the relationship between manager and the people, we call them upstairs, but really should be below you. 
it just it's just what, you mean yeah, the people that people pay your I wages, Gray? Talk, Those people, yeah. I, I wasn't, do, do, I listen wasn't to this. referring to you, I promise. <laughs> but it's just, yeah, I just did not want to be answerable to the type of people that were making football decisions. You know, it's my last job was it's the worst job I had at Newcastle. He told me not to go, he uh, was, and he was right. It, it was just a horrible uh, job. And um, yeah. what does interfere? Just out of curiosity, so I can learn something from this conversation what does interfering I had a chairman look like son was an agent does that yeah well, i know that well you're talking about freddie right but what but what but what but what is interfering to you guys because showing an interest being engaged having an opinion on what you're doing holding you to account making sure you're doing your jobs to the standard that would be the person the ultimate authority with the employers is that interfering I tell you what or I is it just simply I tell people what, doing their jobs I had a, one of the best jobs i had was at blackman rovers john yeah. williams yes you yeah. would come down at lunchtime. I would with John. See yeah. if you would agree with us. Yeah. I don't know how your relationship was. So you'd yeah, come it was down good. It was good. at lunchtime after training, he'd have a bit of lunch with you, and he would he'd start an argument. I'm sure he did it on purpose, but we'd end up, you know, I'd, and I'd walk off. And then on the way home, two hours later, yeah. be on the phone as if nothing had happened, we'd be the best of mates again. And, all and he that's was how it doing, should be, right? I'm, I was more yeah. than happy with that. Mm. All yeah. the time, you know, he was pushing you and pushing you. And and I always said if I ever bought a football club, I would employ him. He treated every penny like it was his own. It was Jack Walker's money. It was Jack's money, yeah. And and he he was a really good chief executive. That's a good type. Yep. The other type is, you sign five players. One of them's not coming up to standard. Mm -hmm. All of a sudden, they stop listening to you and start listening to somebody else. The agents. And and, no, and, and I tell you what, I don't know if you agree with this. Another thing that totally undermines you, and there will not be a club that's successful. There will not be a club that's successful if this happens, where the player can bypass you and go to the chief of executive, yeah, that's or bypass wrong, yeah. the chief executive and go to the owner. What sort of owner were you? Well, you know the, the answer to that question. I don't know. Wish you do, because we've I spoken about it. You, well, you've know, you've, we've spoken about it expe specifically. <laughs> I would hate. Did you my, ever take calls no, from players? No, absolutely not. My champion was my manager. If I start talking to players, you should get your coat. Because that's not the relationship but I want to have. It happens. That happens yeah, all I know. The time. I, I know it does. But that it is that. So when we're talking about interfering, you're know, you talking about you. You guys always want a relationship with the money. You want a relationship with the owner. You don't want a relationship with the chief executive. You think they're the bad carriers. They're in your way. You want the guy that's got the ultimate decision, yeah, right? Just, no, I, I no, 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 no. The, the ultimately, the authority in a football club. When I was asking the question, I'm not trying to do her job in terms of posing you guys questions. Oh, please the, do. I'm enjoying oh, this. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> is, it's not is like them. Is the interfering part? Because I think you guys live in a little world where you think you can do and say as you want without no, any accountability. No, no, and I and I want to see why you think people asking you to be accountable for what you do is somehow you interfering. I don't know what you're about now. Talking about. We're not talking about that now. We're talking well, about no, I'm asking, so you haven't answered the question. The, well, the question was, the what does interfering look like? What does it look like? Interfering looks like when they send you a play and it won't. Right. And it, turns up, it turns up in the dressing room and said, here you are. Oh, this that's is a your, tad this interfering, is your, isn't it? That's a tad, you know what I mean? <laughs> or sending a coach down and saying... Enough? Here's a coach, yes, here's a I, coach no, I, I agree, here. absolutely. Coach the strikers to score goals, like you mean, yeah, to you know, I, I to, to under, undermine you. Um, Who did that to Sam? Tell us, tell us. Well, Derek Pavis did undermine you. Can bang in on the door, try and get in, so I'll f it. <laughs> <laughs> so, That's one way to you know keep I mean? them so, out. <laughs> I mean, so every manager lets me in my dressing room. You, 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 you shut up, get out. <laughs> Mind you, I had to win the league to stay in the job to do that. 